One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and it is Monday, so you know what that means. We are back on a new position for the position outlooks for the job wars heading in to 2000. In 19, last week we dropped four videos discussing the Jaguars wide receivers, and this week we're gonna be dropping four to five more videos of us discussing the Jaguars running backs. We're talking running backs this week. We're gonna have a special feature on Saturday this week, so it's gonna be a special Saturday weekend upload from Troop Talks uh, with my discussing video, which which is just like the one I did with Mr. Why You Mad, and we are gonna be doing it with Jason from another Jags podcast, ladies and gentlemen. If you have not listened to another Jags podcast, I suggest you do. In my opinion, it is the best Jags podcast out there right now. And we're talking running backs, so you know who we're talking about. We're talking about the man himself, Leonard Fournette, who might be one of the biggest question marks heading into 2019 because we really don't know what we're going to get with him. And we're going to discuss his strengths, his weaknesses, and his overall grade as a prospect heading into 2019. We have three or four other guys to talk about as well that aren't named Leonard Fournette and how much of an impact they'll make and whether maybe, maybe or maybe not they will make the roster in 2019, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, this is the Jaguars 2019 positional outlook for running backs. We're going to kick off this outlook by talking about Thomas Rawls, ladies and gentlemen. The Jaguars picked up Thomas Rawls. During, I believe, the first week of the playoffs in 2019, you know, he's been signed with this Jags team now for, I believe, three to four months. So we've known that Thomas Rawls was going to be a part of this team um, about since, I'd say, January, February, somewhere around there. Um, so Thomas Rawls' best season came in 2015 where he had 830 yards and six, uh, 5.6 yards per carry with the Seattle Seahawks. Now the reason I talk about yards per carry is because that, I think, is the biggest grading factor on these Jaguar running backs heading into 2019. Though they have Nick Foles and you know they're going to be, they're going to try to sling the rock and get the ball out of Nick Foles' hands, you know, they are still a run first team. So all these running backs that the Jaguars have, it's very important to judge their yards per carry, especially if they're on the field on a first down or a second down. You know, where the defense knows, hey, this is a run first team. Let's load the let's load the box. Let's make sure that not a big play happens. And 5.6 yards per carry is about right where you want to be uh, if you're in that kind of offense. And he did that once in 2015. And unfortunately, you know his yards were a little bit more skewed after that because he never did as well uh, as he did in 2015 with any of the other teams he was on or any other other seasons with the Seattle Seahawks. Now his strength is his he has very good vision. He does have good vision. That kind of attributes to his uh, yards per carry. You know, he finds the hole. If there's a cutback lane, he's very good at finding it, you know. And Leonard Fournette is one of his biggest cracks is obviously his vision. And Thomas Rawls has better vision than Leonard Fournette, which I don't think is saying too much. But he has really solid vision. And he's a forceful runner as well, kind of like a Leonard Fournette. And I think that's kind of what the Jags did this year is they tried to find a lot of running backs that kind of fit Leonard Fournette's playing style, which I would say two out of the four, you know, like half, half of these running backs that aren't Leonard Fournette. I would say are basic, you know, runners like Leonard Fournette. You know, you got Raquel Armstead, who is very similar, and you got Thomas Rawls, who is also pretty similar as far as being a uh, forceful type of a running back that just gets most of his yards downhill, find the hole, go to it, and uh, try to lay a lick on somebody. So Thomas Rawls is one of those backs, and he, he tends to do it pretty well when he is out there and healthy, but his weakness is just that, his health. He seems to get injured quite a bit. And it seems like when he does go to a different offense where, you know, he's the starter, he gets beaten out usually. You know, he's never too spectacular wherever he goes. You know, he's not an X-Factor player. And some of it has to do with his health. And some of it has to do with, you know, people just straight out outplaying him. So uh, Thomas Rawls a little bit shaky on that end of things. And his speed is not the greatest. He ran a 4.6540, which is not great for a running back. Really not great. And uh, I don't know. I think he makes his roster because I think that uh, there's one other running back that will definitely make the roster. And I think they keep two other backs and they'll probably cut one. And I think Thomas Rawls will end up on the roster. But as much as how much he's going to play a factor in 2019, that is still yet to be determined. So 
that is what I am going with with Thomas Rawls. We're going to be giving him an overall grade of a C. I think he's an average prospect. I think he makes the team. I just think with his health and, you know, people seem to outplay him quite a bit, you know, wherever else he went that wasn't Seattle. Even Seattle, you know, he got beat out for his position. So Thomas Rawls, I'm going to give him a C as a prospect. Not too much to be excited about with Thomas Rawls in 2019. Next up, we're going to be talking about Benny Cunningham. I'm very, very excited to see what Benny Cunningham has to offer in 2019. I know he seems like kind of a nothing signing, and he kind of is, but I think he makes the roster because the Jaguars got rid of Corey Grant. And, you know, Benny, Cun Benny Cunningham does basically the exact same thing Corey Grant did. You know, he was an elusive catcher of the football and, you know, just straight straight blitzing speed you know no one's gonna catch that guy in open field he's also been in the league for quite a time too he's 28 years old so let's go over his strength we already kind of touched on most of it he's elusive and he's a really good receiving back and Nick Foles had really solid receiving backs during his time in Philadelphia with guys like Jay Ajayi guys like Darren Sproles obviously you know and Benny Cunningham kind of fits that same mold so I think he plays well with Nick Foles he plays uh, good off of him um, he has two years of over 200 yards receiving and one with over 350 yards receiving. So, you know, he can do it out of the backfield. And again, he can fill the Corey Grant role, whether that even be on special teams, you know, returning kicks, returning punts. I think that there is a lot of things Benny Cunningham offers this team. And that's why I think he's just, he's not going to be a consideration for a cut next year because I think, or this season, because he has a lot to offer in different ways than these other running backs have to offer in 2019. However, let's talk about his weakness. He is 28 years old, so he's a little he's a little bit on the old side. And uh, a big thing is, is you've been in the league that long, you know, you're 28, but he's never had a season with more than 60 carries. So this is a guy that kind of hangs around rosters. And I think that's what he's going to kind of do with us. I think he's going to hang around the roster. You know, we're going to use him when we need him and uh, put him in in certain situations. So he's not going to be a nuisance. You know, he's not going to be a guy that just sucks. You know, when he goes out there, he would be like, why the fuck do we still have Benny Cunningham? No, he's going to, when he's out there and he has his opportunities, I'm sure he's going to make plays because, you know, he did that um, throughout his career with the receiving yards, you know, and all that. So being an elusive back out of the field, even though he only has 60 carries, you know, he's not, he hasn't been that guy for any NFL team um, this season. So, you know, we can't really talk about his yards per, per, per carry because his, uh, his numbers are a little skewed. He didn't get a lot of carries and he had a shitty <laughs> yards per carry average, even with, you know, the limited amount of carries. I say we can't really judge that, but I guess that kind of just speaks for itself as far as him as a runner, but I think he's going to be used more as a receiving back, you know, kind of in the RPO type of shit. So he, I think, will be fine. I think he'll make the roster, and I'm honestly pretty excited for Benny Cunningham because, you know, I'm a really big fan of runners like Benny Cunningham and like Darren Sproles, Corey Grant, the smaller guys that do a lot in the open field and, Benny Cunningham is one of those guys, and um, I'm excited for him in 2019. His overall grade, I'm going to be giving him a B-. minus. Very, very excited for Benny Cunningham, and very excited to see what he does for the Jaguars in 2019. The next running back we're going to be talking about is Alfred Blue. Now, Alfred Blue is not a sexy signing by any means. You know, we probably got him, and I think I made a video about it, but, you know, it's probably one of those signings that we don't necessarily need to make a video about because he's one of those man guys. You know, that's what it looks like on paper, but Alfred Blue throughout his NFL career has been very, very consistent with yards over 300 or, you know, even 400. His career best came in 2015 with 698 yards, which is good numbers for a running back that is really going to just play a role. I think Alfred Blue and Thomas Rawls are going to kind of fight for the backup running back position, uh, along with Raquel Armstead as well. Uh, those three are going to be those guys that are competing, and, you know, it's it's going to be weird to see, because I think Raquel Armstead does offer a lot, and we're going to be talking about him a little later. But, you know, I think Alfred Blue is another guy that, you know, if Leonard goes down and they don't quite trust Raquel Armstead just yet, maybe because of his age or whatever is going on, but... Uh, Alfred Blue can be very consistent for you. You know, he can go out there, get the decent yards per carry, get the decent yards, and he will be a very solid prospect for you. That's something that kind of goes, you know, kind of lost. If you look at his stats, you look at his tape, he's a very consistent runner. He knows what he's doing. There's not too much flaw to his game. His football IQ is also very well, uh, very good as well. Sorry about that. Uh, he has good vision as well, you know, like kind of like a Thomas Rawls. They both have pretty good vision they're able to get downhill make plays his weaknesses is he 
gets he does get hurt quite a bit and you know he's usually the guy that comes in and fills in for those who gets hurt and he still has two injuries uh two to three injuries on his resume so that is a little skeptical but you know you kind of get that with Houston running backs it seems like no Houston running back um gets gets that many yards and unfortunately though I said his yards per carry was decent um they're decent for the stats he put up you know what I'm saying like I put this in the weakness you know, and then I'm talking about him. His yards per carry are decent for what he picked up. You know, it's kind of like a Leonard Fournette situation. He picks up 600, 700 yards, and his yards per carry is like three point something. I understand that, but that's still pretty decent stats, you know, to be putting up. But his yards per carry, if he does have to come in in a situation where he's going to be that every down back, that backup, uh, if Leonard does get hurt and he has a history of doing so, or getting suspended or whatever the case is, then Alpha Blue needs to improve his yards per carry. And uh, that much is obvious. And he did not find the end zone a lot. He only had, I think, two, three touchdowns was his most in his career. So Alfred Blue is a whole prospect. I'm going to be giving him a C+. Plus. I think he's a solid guy that is consistently good. He's consistently good. His yards per carry may not have too much to offer. But I like where he's at. And it's going to be hard to determine how many running backs they keep uh, on this 53-man roster. They have quite a bit of backs that do a lot for them. And I'm very excited to see what they do. But a C-plus grade for Alfred Blue heading into 2019. Next up, we're going to be talking about the prospect that turned me around the fastest. I had no interest in Raquel Armstead at all. Zero. And I've seen his tape. And I see what he's going to offer, and I seen the fact that he might be getting uh, quite a bit of reps next year. I was like, Raquel Armstead, man, that's a new running back. I'm very, very excited to see what he can do. He's very similar to Leonard Fournette. He's one of those running backs that I talked about earlier that have basically the same running style as Leonard Fournette. You know, he's a down downhill runner, powerful, can make can make you miss not only with his speed and his feet, but he can make you miss by just trucking you over. And you know, that's part of his game. He had a he ran a four point five forty, so he definitely has some speed. He has some speed to him, and last year he averaged 5.2 yards per carry with over a 1,000 all-purpose yards. So that is very exciting. He's very reminiscent of Leonard Fournette. His stats also uh, from Temple are very comparable to Leonard Fournette because he was basically the bell cow of the Temple offense. You know, everything they ran went through Raquel Armstead, and that's kind of how the Jags were in 2017 when Leonard Fournette had his really, really solid year, and he's also not the best catcher out of the backfield just like Leonard Fournette. So that's another knock on him that's basically the main knock you have on him is he doesn't catch a lot of passes. You know, he's a true running back. You know, the exact opposite of Benny Cunningham, where Benny Cunningham is more of a receiving back out of the backfield. Raquel Armstead's more of a get the ball, truck over some guys, and get my yards the old-fashioned way. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that, you know, in this day and age in the NFL, if you're going to be a running back, you kind of have to catch the ball. You know, that's part of every team's repertoire is to get the ball to the running backs, you know, even in passing situations. So, you know, that is something he's going to have to work on his vision as well we kind of touched on it very similar to Leonard Fournette there are some games that he played that it looked like he basically just you know he knew where the hole was but it was clogged up but he still went there anyway you know there's still he's still young you know he's a rookie and he's gonna have those growing pains especially you know his first couple of years in the NFL I would imagine so Raquel Armstead you know he needs to improve his vision and he also played at Temple which is kind of it's not a smaller school it's in a pretty decent conference but they're usually at the bottom of the conference you know, so being the guy at Temple and in the conference you're in with the stats you put up kind of explains why you got drafted in the fifth round. You know, you don't know what this guy's going to do in the NFL, if it's going to translate to an NFL level. But that's kind of a, not. it's not a great knock. But, you know, I was just trying to look for something to talk about with knocking on Raquel Armstead. Because this guy as a whole, I'm very, very excited for him. And I think he's going to be doing some great things, which is why I gave him a B grade overall as a prospect heading into 2019 excited what's to see what this young kid can do for the jaguars next year and now we're going to be diving into the man that everybody wants to talk about and that man's name is leonard fournette we're talking leonard fournette ladies and gentlemen and the 2017 fournette is the guy that we remember so fondly like he bailed the Jags out in so many situations. Who will forget against the Rams in 2017 when they took the opening kickoff for a touchdown. Then Leonard Fournette got the first handoff, took it 80 yards. The competitor, Leonard Fournette. And in 2018, when things went south for the Jaguars, it almost seemed like he just didn't care. You know, he wasn't trying. He got suspended. He got injured. 
everything just constant blows his maturity is something that needs to step up and like i said through his instagram stories and through what he has been doing in the offseason i really think he's trying to make the necessary steps to do that because you have to imagine imagine john de Filippo came up to him and said hey we're going to need you to be that dude this year. We're going to need you to reach back to where you were in 2017 because this offense runs through you. They didn't just draft you, draft you top five to not, you know, for you not to be this great running back. That's what they do to draft running backs in a top five or in the first round even. Let's look at some first round running backs right now. Todd Gurley, he's ca- tearing it up. Saquon Barkley, Giants, tearing it up. Ezekiel Elliott. Leonard Fournette is the only guy that hasn't panned out, and that's a very Jaguar thing to happen, ladies and gentlemen. That is such a Jaguar thing to happen, but he has the potential to do that. He's improved his catching out of the backfield, which is getting better every year, and it should be getting better again in 2019 in year number three. It improved in 2018, but, you know, he got hurt and things just went south. I believe he only had one game in 2018, maybe with over 100 yards rushing. He can't stay on the field. That is the knock on him. His off the field injuries and his and his off the field injuries and his off the field issues need to change in 2019 because if it does, he's one of the game's best running backs and he's part of an elite young core of guys that are going to be taking over this league someday. You know the Saquon Barkleys, Ezekiel Elliott, the Todd Gurley's, the Christian McCaffrey's. You know Leonard Fournette has an opportunity to be that dude, and we can only hope in 2019 that he reaches that full potential because he has it. And he just has to realize it. And I'm very, very excited to see Leonard Fournette in 2019. Hopefully this whole ship turns around, not only for the Jaguars, but for Leonard Fournette. I'm giving Leonard Fournette an overall A grade in 2019. I think he's coming back with a vengeance, and I think he's going to be coming back hard. And I think he is going to be a huge part of this Jaguar offense in 2019 and should be our best offensive player next year, ladies and gentlemen. So that was me going over the running backs in 2019. It's going to be very hard to decide who stays and who goes if you're in the Jaguars front office. And that was Jaguars positional outlook for the running backs. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.